Stephen Sultana, uh, and his is on an optimal operationally medium voltage distribution networks embedded with distributed and renewable generation systems. Ladies and yes. So good morning everyone. So as Matt said, uh, focus of my thesis is the optimal operation of medium voltage distribution networks embedded with renewable and distributed generation systems. So traditionally, uh, electricity distribution networks have been designed assuming centralised generation and therefore unidirectional power flow. However, in recent years, there has been increased emphasis on environmental sustainability. This has led to the increased penetration of renewable generation <coughs> systems. Now, our report in 2011 outlined that it is predicted to, the level of renewable generation is predicted to uh, increase to over 50% by the year 2050. Now, by doing this, the previous assumption is no longer true, and generation becomes decentralised, and therefore uh, bidirectional power flow is introduced. So therefore, a strategy is needed to develop to assist with network planning to reduce the adverse effects caused by this. And this led to uh, the focus of my thesis. So what I'm doing is, what I've done is I've developed a structured and systematic approach uh, to determining the optimal sizing and siting of distributed generator in a medium voltage network. Now this has been considering four objectives of minimising voltage regulator tap operations, minimising power loss, energy not supply, and DG capital cost. Now today I'll explain in this presentation four key points of my thesis. First one is how I've modelled the intimacy of renewable resources and also low variability. I'll then go on to explain the derivation of the four single objective optimisation algorithms. From that, I will outline how I've used the analytical hierarchy process to determine the objective weightings considering the relative views of multiple stakeholders. Now from, from this, I've used these weightings to determine the multi-objective, to develop a multi-objective optimisation algorithm to determine the overall optimal solution. Now, to model the uncertain nature uncertain load demand and stochastic nature of load of renewable generation, I've developed a method for determining typical 24-hour generation profiles using distribution functions um, respectively for each of the three uh, profiles. So for this, of course, you cannot account for, uh, say, for example, with renewable generation, periods in the day where cloud cover comes over and you don't have the output for solar generation, for example. However, what I've, what I've done is I've proposed a method to develop a typical 24 hour profile that would be consistent over uh, the duration of a year, ignoring these small um, inconsistencies. Now this, this method is applicable for data for any arbitrary network rather than developed for a specific single network. So as seen here, the uh, three, three profiles used for the duration, for this, the, uh, the work conducted in this thesis. So, to conduct this thesis, I use the IEEE 34 node uh, test system as it has an online substation, unload type changing substation transformer, uh, two step voltage regulators, and two static capacitor banks. Now, the step voltage regulators are crucial in observing the effect that DG has on minimizing uh, tap, uh, tap, uh, voltage regulator tap operations. So, a, a model was created in Simulink. Uh, using the inbuilt SimPower Sim Systems toolbox. And this was first done to provide a situation analysis of how DG can affect um, type operations. It was also used as a base case to compare the algorithm results against to ensure their accuracy. So, in order to ensure that the optimization algorithm correctly modeled the distribution network, the network constraints were modeled mathematically and implemented as constraints into the optimization algorithm. So as you see here, first the entire network was split into three sub-networks, with each network joined by a step voltage regulator. For each of those networks, the load flow equations were implemented to determine the voltage and the real reactive power at each bus. The operation of the step voltage regulator was then implemented to join the three networks together. Over the entire network, predetermined standard limits were implemented to ensure that the voltage each bus were within the the standards at uh, the network standards, and that the current capacity of the transmission lines and the rating of the distribution equipment was not exceeded. 
Finally, the time-growing nature of the load demand and degeneration profile was implemented by separating the model into discretized time, discretized times over a 24-hour period. So the first optimization algorithm that was implemented was that to minimize voltage regulator tap operations. Now for the optimization algorithm results so I'm going to present, the graph on the left, for both graphs, sorry, the, bottom, the x axis shows the bus that the DG was implemented on. And for the graph on the left, the y axis shows the, tap, the objective value. And the y axis on the graph on the right shows the corresponding DG rating. So for tap operations, it can be seen that by implementing DG towards the end of the feeder, with bus 1 being the grid connection and bus 34 being the most remote, most, most remote bus. Um, a most significant, the most significant effect reduction in tap operations can be achieved. And this was most prominent when solar generation was implemented. And this is due to, in the middle of the day when the load demand peaks, solar generation roughly follows the same trend. Therefore, the voltage at the nodes does not change significantly and the voltage regulators do not have to operate. Also as seen on the graph on the right, the size, optimal size DG remains fairly consistent throughout the regardless of the bus is implemented on. It is therefore more efficient to implement on a bus where the greatest, substantial, the, the greatest reduction in uh, taps is present. Now, the second um, optimization algorithm developed was that to minimize energy not supply. Now, as you can see on the left, as the DG is implemented further from the grid connection, there is going to be significant reductions in the total uh, ENS. This is because the DG can supply power to the isolated section of the bus in a great number of fault scenarios when implemented further away from the grid connection. Also, as seen, the wind, uh, conventional and wind generation uh, have the greatest effect on reducing ENS as they are relatively consistently available throughout the day as compared to solar, where there is no generation um, available at night. Now, the third optimization I developed was that to minimise power losses. And as seen on the left, when implemented after SVR2, so the second step voltage regulator, which is between bus 19 and bus uh, 34, the most substantial reduction in power losses can be achieved. Now, this is most prominent with conventional and wind again, with reductions of up to 85%, and solar of reductions of approximately 50 to 60%. Now, this is because um, as a large portion of the load is aggregated at the end of the feeder, by supplying this power close, by implementing a DG close to the, the, loads, um, the load buses, the power does not have to be imported from above the network, uh, from the grid connection, it does not have to flow through the upstream transmission line and equipment where losses can occur. Now, for the formulation of the DG capital cost objective, uh, two components have been taken into account. The first is a component which, where the cost is proportional to the size of the DG. Now the second component is that for environmental cost. Now, in terms of the, uh, in recent, recent times, the, there's been a carbon pricing mechanism in, implemented which charges a fixed price for the amount of CO2 emissions by companies. So, in the past this is not present. So, to show the trend that this will, to show the effect this will have in terms of a cost perspective, and has been included for conventional ge generation systems. So to do this, three scenarios have been considered. The past scenario where there was no environmental cost, a scenario in the present where the current cost of $23 per tonne of CO2 is implemented, and a future scenario where in 20 years where, uh, which is approximately $61, this is accounting for the estimated 5% annual increase in um, the cost per carbon emissions. And then the total carbon emissions over the duration of the, over the lifetime, sorry, of the uh, conventional generation is then summed together and added to the capital cost. Now, to determine the objective weightings for each of the, to determine the objective weightings for the multi-objective optimization <laughs> algorithm, the analytical hierarchy process was used. So AHP is a complex decision-making process that uses a hierarchical structure. So it first takes into account the, the relative stakeholders in the decision making process, which for this have been the customer, utility, and the DG slash microgrid owner. Now for this, it takes into their relative importance in the decision making process. For example, the utility might have the greatest um, decision making of that 
outweighed by the cost to implement it. The advantages are so small that the cost outweighs their benefit. So the, actual, the most viable solution is actually to not implement DG at all. So contributions to our study. So to this our study, I've developed a method for determining a typical 24-hour profile for low demand and renewable generation technologies. I've then used this to develop four uh, dedicated single objective optimization algorithms. Um, from this, um, then I've proposed the applicability of AHP in determining objective weightings, which have then been used in the multi-objective optimization algorithm to determine an overall optimal solution considering the weighted objectives of the uh, four algorithms. Questions?